the top story this hour. Public Participation Office for Good Construction says the support from the public is exceeding expectations. An African continental free trade area looks to connect African economies. Hello, this is Andy's News Hour. I'm Solomon Daniel. Thanks for joining me. Office of the Prime Minister has launched its monthly New Horizon of Hope digital newsletter as of today. The newsletter intends to entertain summary of issues and undertakings of each month with paramount significance to the people and government of Ethiopia. The virtual meeting of the Ministers of Water Affairs of Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan could not be held due to the non-attendance of the delegation of Sudan. The delegation of Egypt, AU assigned experts and observers attended the meeting following the invitation extended by Ethiopia, the chair of the meeting. It is to be recalled that Ethiopia, while communicating its reservations to the chairperson of the AU Executive Committee, to adopt the document drafted by the AU assigned experts as an input to the trilateral negotiation. Nevertheless, the meeting planned to tax stock of agreed and outstanding issues could not be held due to the absence of the Sudanese delegation. According to Minister of Water Irrigation and Energy, Ethiopia notified this development to the chairperson of the AU Executive Council. The Office of the National Council for the Coordination of Public Participation for the Construction of the GERD says the support from the public is exceeding expectations. While the tripartite negotiation is still going on among the three countries, Ethiopia wraps up efforts to complete one of the huge hydropower projects in the, con in the continent being erected on the river Abai. We have more on this story. The completion of the GERD, which the country is building on the river Abai, seems to be imminent. At the construction stage, hits more than 78%. Ethiopians from all walks of life are sending out supports for the flagship project, exceeding expectations. According to Office of the National Council for the Coordination of Public Participation, 790 million bus support has been collected from the public in the past five months alone, which surpasses the sixth month plan of the council. The office recently received a 20 million bus support from the Federal Housing Corporation. Director General of the office, Aragawi Beraha, while receiving the support, urged Ethiopians to intensify their effort, thereby writing a vivid history of their generation. <laughs> Other organizations, corporations and companies should follow suit in providing support for the flagship project. This project is a game changer in the entire country's endeavor. We should repeat history by completing this mega project like what our forefathers did at the Battle of Adwa, which we are preparing to celebrate soon. I call upon all Ethiopians to put their prints on this historical project. Uh, to look transformation. The support that has been pouring in from different directions was promising in the past five months, said the office, adding that the pest should be wrapped up to complete the dam in time. The people are becoming enthusiastic about the dam like never before. That's what we learned from the support that we got in the past five months. We were able to collect 790 million bur, which surpassed our six months plan of action. This should be intensified. Our diplomatic efforts should also be augmented to effectively deal with the pressure that come with the construction. The much-anticipated hydropower dam project is expected to start early generation by the end of this Ethiopian fiscal year. 
The Planning and Development Commission says its 10-year national development plan has prioritized sustainable financial growth, inclusive and quality economy. In an interview with Policy Matters, the Commissioner Futsuma Sefa indicated the current 10-year development plan is aimed at reducing poverty by half and ensuring the prosperity of the nation. Kasan Jane presents the story as follows. The Planning and Development Commission said the 10-year National Development Plan has prioritized sustainable financial growth, inclusive and quality economy. Commissioner Fizuma Safa indicated that the development plan is a great departure in Ethiopia's economic development to ensure equity and efficiency. The 10-year uh, plan uh, envisions uh, it about to be an African beacon of prosperity uh, by 2030. And uh, you know, having this vision uh, uh, at the top, uh, it has this overarching goal of uh, ensuring shared prosperity, mm -hmm. prosperity in all its dimensions, where you know every citizen gets uh, you know his or share of the cake. Uh, so, this again for this to happen, uh, the best economy should uh, stay in the high growth trajectory, mm -hmm. uh, and we targeted to. Uh, register 10% uh, average GDP growth over the 10 years' time. She said the 10-year development plan includes wide-ranging and quality economic growth, sustainable financial institution development, technological capacity building, and digital economic growth. The commissioner further noted that the 10-year development plan is aimed at reducing poverty by half and ensuring a nation's prosperity. The private sector is not yet there, especially the domestic private sector. Uh, we have been saying that for long, but you know the question is, you know, when uh, should it start to be there? You know, sure. and when and because we don't have any replacement for it, do we have substitute? We don't. <laughs> so the private sector should uh, really come into the driver's seat, and so. When uh, shall we start nurturing it? Yeah, mm. so that's the question. So uh, now the government really understands the bumpy road that the private sector have been through, and we have not been uh, really supportive enough. As I always say, the relationship between the private sector and the government has been complicated kind of relationship the past. Uh, decade or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so now the government really wants to sm have really a better and a smooth uh, environment for the private sector to have really honored partnership, honored deals, so to speak, uh, transparent deals. So unless we have those, unless we have that honored partnership and deals with the private sector, we cannot really achieve the goals, the ambitions that we set out on our 10-year perspective plan. The plan is also prioritizing the private sector, green development, institutional building and access to justice and public service, social inclusion and development, development and connectivity in a region and building peace and security. <laughs> This is Adi's News Hour. The recognition of Little Ethiopia by the Washington, D.C. Council will beef up the tourism industry among the Ethiopian diaspora. Ethio-American political scientist Professor Brooke Hailu made the remark 
In an interview with the TV English, he has congratulated Ethiopians and friends of Ethiopia on the recognition which was realized after two decades. Shifarola reports. Ethiopian American communities in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area are celebrating the recognition of Little Ethiopia by the council members of Washington, D.C. In an exclusive interview with ETV English, Professor of Political Science Brooke Heidel has expressed his congratulations to Ethiopians and friends of Ethiopia. Certain parts of uh, Washington, D.C., 9th Street and U. If you guys know that the whole area around that area, 9th Street, U Street, up to 12th Street, that neighborhood now is officially renamed as Little Ethiopia. And all of us are thrilled and happy. All of us are really happy. It took the Ethiopian community 20 years, 20 years to bring into success uh, the, the certain part of uh, uh, districts, the historical dist district of Washington, D.C. be named. As one of the contributors of the recognition, Professor Brooke recounts the process which spanned two decades. Uh, I was involved in that uh, in two, from 2001 to 2004. I was at the time a uh, senior diplomat of Ethiopia, uh, stationed in Washington, D.C., and I was working hand in hand with the Ethiopian community. Some members are still there. I could name names. Uh, it, the idea died down. I, I left to Europe on another assignment after that, and uh, I tried to follow what was going on. Between, I believe, 2005, 2004, until 2009, the idea was... Uh, hanging up in the air and guess what the committee once again reconstituted itself in 2009 they tried again and they succeeded in 2020 December that's remarkable that's remarkable similar efforts will be made to scale up the move to other parts of the country with large Ethiopian communities he added uh, success is sweet but the road might be bumpy uh, and uh, we are glad that uh, now, uh, for always, any Ethiopian, future generation, and you, when you come, you guys come to America, you have a place to visit and all tourists to visit called Little Ethiopia. And one last point on that, uh, it's the second city, Los Angeles succeeded before Washington, D.C. In shorter a time, if you go to Los Angeles, there is a neighborhood called Little Ethiopia there. And we want to continue as a wish as an Ethiopian American in Seattle, in Atlanta, in Denver, in uh, North Carolina, in, in New York and other places. The recognition of Little Ethiopia by the council will further bolster and strengthen the social and cultural ties between Addis Ababa and Washington, D.C., he pointed out. Policy Matters is a conversation platform which aims to provide reasoned analysis and context to the activities, reforms, and policies of the federal government of Ethiopia. Exploring various reforms the government is undertaking, the conversation platform aspires to enable nuanced and informed understanding. Why was policy reform necessary, uh, which started out with the homegrown economic reform and now is the 10-year perspective plan? Why was it necessary? The growth that uh, Ethiopia has been registering for the last uh, decade or so uh, lacked quality. The uh, ten-year plan uh, envisions uh, Ethiopia to be an African beacon of prosperity uh, by 2030, and uh, you know having this vision uh, uh, at the top, uh, it has this overarching goal of uh, ensuring shared prosperity, mm -hmm. prosperity in all its dimensions, where you know every citizen gets uh, you know his or share of the cake. Uh, we both know that the private sector has not been allowed to grow. Now the government really understands the bumpy road that the private sector have been through. How do you plan on then getting growth and achieving some of these fantastic ambitions that you've laid down to be achieved through the private sector? <laughs> so the private sector should uh, really come into the driver's seat. Uh, you know, we have these interim strategies, for instance, the public-private partnership. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really working well, especially in areas of energy and infrastructure. We want to expand that, of course, to other sectors too. So that would really augment the uh, capacities of the private sector.
EI Bank of Ethiopia announces that it is intensifying its efforts to restore the eyesight of the visually impaired by coordinating volunteers. Lemla Mayela, Director General, General of the Eye Bank of Ethiopia, told TV that donation of eye lenses still lag behind expectation because of many reasons. Imani Jorge has more on the story. Damene Besha was a household who had been working as a carpenter and was heading his family by his income only from that work. But the visual impairment he got in later days forced him to stop his job for long years. But after waiting for a long period of time, he has got back his side in lens replacement surgery, which the lens is donated in Eye Bank of Ethiopia. Due to the contract in my eye, my left eye was affected not to see things in short distance. I was not able to take things which I dropped from my hand. I could not see things vividly. I was facing such difficulties related to visual impairment. Sometimes I was tricked by my eye by looking the nail I was to hit as if it is two and three when I was formerly working as a carpenter. Because of that, I am forced to stop that job. It has been five years since. I came to Manilik Hospital to get this medical treatment of my eye. And now I get the opportunity of getting the donated lens and lens replacement surgery. Lens replacement specialist and medical director of Eye Bank of Ethiopia, Menena Yadio, said to see people regaining their sight by lenses donated from volunteers has some great meaning for her. The youngest for who I run his lens replacement surgeon is a three years infant. He has a cataract since he was born. So, starting from that, we have operated up to aged people lens replacement surgery. This child was born with a natural disorder. Some others are caused by accidents, and there are several reasons behind all visual impairments. There are many accidents on eyes of the youth on daily basis. Especially, there are some who naturally are one eye impaired and lose sight of the remaining. So, there is a significant life change when they regain their sight. Maybe some have come with walking sticks, and you can understand how it feels. And that's a big change when you hear them, after the lens replacement surgery, saying, I could see you today. Eye Bank of Ethiopia explained that there are many factors contributed for the insufficiency of donation of eye lenses to the number of people with cataracts in Ethiopia. There is imbalance between the demand and the supply of surgeons and those who want the lens replacement surgery. When the number of the surgery requests rise, we need a big number of optical surgeons. And if so, we also need high amount of donated eye lens to distribute. So we are educating the public about this matter as much as possible. The number of eye lenses is growing. In route, we want to thank all partners who are supporting us. Additionally, we are working to make a fellowship of optical special surgeons and to train them, if possible, in our country, and if not, in other well-experienced countries. The Eye Bank of Ethiopia calls for volunteers to donate their islands after their death to brighten the life of many who are waiting for islands donations to replace their islands in Eye Bank of Ethiopia. And in business, uh, the Deputy Mayor of Addis Ababa City Administration, Adana Chabab, inaugurates a, a mock care center worth one billion baht. The administration has been working to construct uh, additional mock care centers in different sub cities of the capital to enable the community to access vegetable and fruit market services. Jerusalem is our present story. Following the outbreak of the coronavirus, the Addis Ababa City Vegetable and Fruit Market was temporarily relocated in Jan Meda since April 2020. But now it's moved into different subsidies of the capital permanently. The one billion per cost market center in Lafto, inaugurated by Deputy Mayor of Addis Ababa City Administration, Adan Chabebe, enables the community to access vegetable and fruit market service. 
Talking to ETVM Harik, head of the Addis Ababa City Trade Bureau, Abdul Fattah Yusuf reminded the root cause for relocating the Addis Ababa City vegetable and fruit market from Piasa to Jan Meda. Due to the outbreak of the corona pandemic worldwide, including in our country, the city admin has temporarily relocated the famous and biggest fruit and vegetable market in the city, which is called in Amharic article Terra, to the open space in Janmida. The decision was also relevant to enforce social distancing to fight COVID-19. However, as we know, Janmida is an open space and has been used to perform various social and religious ceremonies for long rather than using for marketing purpose. Therefore, the city administration has been constructing different market centers to city residents to access the service nearby. He added the city administration will focus on building additional market centers to enable the community to access the service easily. This loft of vegetable and fruit market center is the one. But other market centers are also under construction on different subsidies of the capital. Now our priority is to expand modernization in our marketing system with competitive manner among traders and to be accessible quality service with equitable price for customers. Mm. The Lafto market covers an area of 80,000 square meters and has 5,588 shops in 14 sheds. Adi Sababa hosts exhibitions and bazaars during holidays which provide consumers with sustainable venues to purchase appropriate goods and services for Christmas. They urge exhibitors to implement the precautionary measures to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Kaptam Washagri has more. Various Christmas exhibition and bazaars are open in Addis Ababa, creating opportunities for consumers to get appropriate goods and services. Business persons who are participating in the bazaar said they are providing products with a reasonable price. <laughs> We are providing honey and butter in this buzzer. We are not paying entrance fee in this buzzer. Thus, we bring these products with reasonable price. Everyone can come and visit us. We have t-shirts that have value of 150 and 200 bir in this bazaar. The normal price of this t-shirt is 250 to 300 bir. We are providing big discount to promote consumers in this bazaar. Consumers for day pass says the exhibition and bazaar helps them to get products with attractive price. There are many new products in the bazaar. We can get critical products which are not accessible in other areas. The price of these products are fair. It's so nice. <laughs> There is big discount in this bazaar. I have purchased good shows in this bazaar. The price is attractive comparing with other shops. I use such opportunities all the time. Consumers urge business persons and consumers to implement the precaution measures to control the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> No one is implementing social distancing. Even anyone is not using face masks. Trading each other without taking precautionary measures is treacherous. Thus, it's critical to implement appropriate measures. Everyone is moving freely. I think it is better to remind COVID-19 there are no precautionary measures at all. It is good to promote about COVID-19 like before. Apart from displaying products, business persons said the exhibition helps them to create market linkage. The African Continental Free Trade Area has officially been launched in a landmark agreement interconnecting African economies for economic empowerment of the continent. Gosh from CGTN.
The Africa Continental Free Trade Area is now open among all member states in it. It has become the world's largest free trade area since the formation of the World Trade Organization. That trading official. The Secretary General of the FCFTA, Wam Kelemene, says this platform is a key instrument for Africa's development. By the year 2035, where as Africans we implement this agreement effectively, we have the opportunity to lift out of poverty 100 million Africans. And the majority of those 100 million Africans that will be lifted out of poverty where we effectively implement this agreement are women in trade. I shall undertake this. He calls on African states to take active stages in order to make the Africa continental free trade area help the continent present a great opportunity for especially small and medium business enterprises. When implemented the agreement well, the FCFTA will help devil intra-trade by 2035. We have to take as Africans active steps to overcome the smallness of our national economies, to overcome the lack of uh, uh, economies of scale, and we have to take active steps to make sure that we place Africa on a path to industrial development, accelerated industrial development, so that by the year 2035, we're able to double intra-Africa trade and double intra-Africa trade in value-added uh, goods. African continental free trade area is also hoped to boost Africa's trading position in the global market by strengthening the continent's common voice and policy space in global trade negotiations. Before we go, a reminder of our top stories. Public Participation Office for Good Construction says the support from the public is exceeding expectations.